Today's question is, what do you do when you're not the same teacher as everyone else in your building? Before I get into this question, I want to note that I have something on my shirt and it is, I don't know what it's going on there, but just so if you're watching this and you think, does Reynolds have something on his shirt? He does. And he's not sure what it is. These kids are gross sometimes. So it could be that. I'm blaming it on the children. So I got a comment uh, just recently and the comment was something along the lines of sort of like, what do you do if you're the black sheep in your teacher team? So whether it's your grade level team or it's your PLC or something along those lines, what do you do when you don't get down with everything that's sort of prescribed by your team? And I've run into this a lot. And so that's why I kind of wanted to speak to it because there are ways in which, you know, I do things in my class, the way that I teach, the way that I discipline, the way that I interact with students that is not in the past always been looked at as the way things should be handled or the way things should be taught or the way things should be dealt with. And so I know a lot of you kind of, out there if you're watching this channel right you're probably there's some of that in you where you are slightly left of center and i think that's a good space to be in i think that that should be applauded and i think all teachers should really be leaning into who they actually are instead of who they're supposed to be the problem is with the education system the way that it is we've sort of tried to homogenize everything where we have scripted curriculum and we have state tests that we're teaching to and there's this very specific way you're supposed to be teaching things and the things that you're even supposed to be teaching have all been written and given to you and now you are just a cog in the machine to get you to like to get the students from a to b and i don't think it works like that no one wants to be a cog in a machine then you just look like a robot this is my this is my bad robot right here <laughs> people might have clicked off right there. Here's how I handle that situation. One, the way I'm able to do this. And so look, some of this is not going to fit, right? I feel like this is a theme in my videos recently. Some of the things I'm going to say will not work for you. It is about the spirit of what I'm saying and not what I'm actually saying all the time. So some of these things you can implement right away. Some of them you can't. Quick caveat warning thing there. Awesome. Let's go. Number one, I've been doing what I've been doing for a long time and it works. That is my number one go-to piece of information that I tell myself and I have to remind myself. So in, hi. I'm not. I'm just, I'm not the one. do you want to be on? I'm just saying, all right. That's all. <laughs> that was my co-teacher popping in there. Um, in the last four years, speaking of which, I have had seven co-teachers. Most people I know co-teach with people for years, like 10, 20 years, maybe their whole career, they're staying together. I have had people that have lasted for a year, have lasted for half a year. One lady taught with me for a day. She went to lunch and she never came back. I don't know where you are, Miss Lynn, but I'm still here, I'm still waiting for you to return. And then other times like Mr. Fines last year, they just moved him to another grade. So he was a great co-teacher. I loved being with him day before school, switched him out. And I got Kayla. So it's just this ever revolving door. Some of those folks I've really jived with. So fines last year, we really got along. We saw things eye to eye. We handled discipline similarly. We, like we did a lot of stuff and we're able to sort of vibe off of one another, which was a really good thing. In the past though, I've had other teachers that have not done things the same way. They didn't believe in building relationships. They didn't believe in getting to know the students. They didn't believe in spending your extra time with the students. They didn't believe in the way I sort of did things. So to give you an idea, if a student gets in trouble in class, let's say someone curses or they have their phone out or they are, you know, sort of bullying someone else or not even just bullying someone else, but using language or being aggressive towards someone else, that teacher thought or, and our school has this process in which we are supposed to remove that child from class, have them write a reflection sheet, have them come back to class when they are ready, call their parents, log it in our online logging system. Then if there's a certain number of infractions, you are supposed to have the parent come in and meet with someone. And then you're, it's a possibility of them getting suspended and them getting detentions and or having community service to do. Like there's all these things in place if something goes wrong in class. 
I just don't buy it. Like, I just think that the way I do it is better for me, not for everyone. Nothing I do is the be all end all. And so even relationships, some teachers don't do it and they find great success in their classroom. For me, it's my strength. That's what I lean into. So for instance, instead, if someone's acting a fool, if someone's doing something they're not supposed to, if their phone is out, I've talked before about how I handle cell phones. I have videos about this already. If someone is bullying someone else or today I had an issue like this. I had an issue where a student said something really mean to a kid that should have zero things mean said to him, right? It's a student that I'm not sure can always like, they can't articulate the quick witted response fast enough. So I said, hey man, can you do me a favor? Can you step in the hallway real quick? This is the kid that said whatever the thing was. And I don't want to repeat it in case my students are watching this. Step in the hall for me real quick. You're not in trouble. I just want to talk to you real fast. And so when I go out there, I say, look, here's the deal. That student and these two other students in that class are off limits. If there's an issue again, because I know they're not bothering you, like sometimes that's more of a conversation. I know they're not bothering you. If it happens again, this is gonna be like hard and fast justice because they don't have the wherewithal to have the witty comeback and you are picking on someone that's weaker. Now, what you could do is use what you've got, right? This is still me talking to student. You could use what you've got to uplift that kid. Because I want you to think about for a second, if someone like you said to, like a nice thing, a comforting thing, just even what's up to that guy, what's that gonna do for his day? Yes, because you have power. So uplifting people is a lot harder than tearing them down. Even though you're getting the quick laugh, what you're gonna do in response is literally potentially change someone's life. So that it's your choice, but know that this is gonna go one of two ways. And then that's it. I don't call home. I don't do any of the other things I'm supposed to do because it's been handled. What if kids keep doing it? What if that kid still does it? Then I call in my buddy Cho. She's the Dean of Students. I call her in. We sit down with that student. We explain it to him again. If it keeps persisting, then I'm going to, it's going to be like calling parents and all the regular stuff. There's going to be a meeting. There's going to be a, an issue out of it. But typically, if I can just name the problem, give the kid an alternative, empower them even in the moment, it doesn't happen. What do I do with teaching, right? So when this happens in teaching, if I am teaching a lesson, so other teachers that I've worked with have said, hey, we're beginning Lord of the Flies. What are you doing to start the, pro the, the book? I'm like, I'm, already, I'm, I'm getting ready to start tomorrow. And, and it's like, I just do things that are different than most of the rest of the curriculum that's in my school. So when we start Lord of the Flies, we watch the beginning of Lost and the beginning of Cast Away with Tom Hanks. And I show the plane wreck scene and then we, I, there's a whole nother video on this as well. And I don't remember what video that is. I wanna say I'll link it below, but above. I'll see if I can find it. If it's not linked above, then, then this is a scavenger hunt, everyone. Enjoy. If I am teaching something like that, I'll try to explain to people what I do. like watching those two film clips. Then we do this project on imagery and the kid, or this, we do this activity on imagery where everyone puts their head down when they come into class and I have jungle noises on and I read this paragraph that is, gives you the sense that you just landed on a deserted island, that you were hurt, that there are no parents around. There's no one there to take care of you and you've realized you're gonna be here for a long time. I want that imagery to show up in my kids' heads. And then we, there's a number of other activities that we do like, set stuff on fire without matches or a lighter to see what that's like, build forts. Um, we do another imagery activity where the students lay wherever they want in the room and we listen to poetry and we think about, like I want them to conjure up the images in their head that are coming from the way the poet is saying the words that he's saying. So there's all this stuff, but like, that's not something that's like written in our curriculum. It's stuff that I think is cool, right? So what do I do when people dog me for it, when someone thinks I'm doing too much, when people have literally come to my room and said, um, why are you doing all of this stuff? Like this isn't in the curriculum. And that comes down to two things, right? Both of these ideas that I'm saying, curriculum wise and behavior wise, dealing with students have come down to two things. One, I know that I've done this for a long time and I know what works for my students. Two, I just don't care what other people say. And I know that is a really difficult thing to hear from someone. It's a difficult thing to sort of like, like it's a difficult answer to run with. But here's why I think this is good. Over time, I have been able to consistently show that building relationships, that 
thinking outside the box, that making class engaging, that doing all of the wacky stuff that I do is a win for my students. If it does go to my principal, to my vice principal, to my dean, to the curriculum head, I do still get pushback sometimes, but largely people get where I'm coming from. And I am able to articulate what I'm thinking and feeling and why I do what I do that I get away with it. So that is part of it. Part of it is knowing your why. Why are you doing it that way? If you're just doing it to be cool or to, or to make your students like you more than they like anyone else, you're gonna lose. It has to be, I try and make things super engaging because my kids get bored otherwise. Because I have guys that are on second grade reading level and we're trying to read a ninth grade text and if I don't have all the bells and whistles and I'm not juggling fire, it fails. And I think those kids deserve a little fire juggling because school has sucked for the last 14 years of your life that we should be giving them something better. What do you do in a day-to-day -day team that you might see to help try and figure some of this stuff out or help like sit in those meetings and explain what you're doing so that you don't look like a total lunatic or a failure? I really think that in those situations, it comes down to one, I, I, if I'm in a situation like that, right? If I'm in a situation where I'm explaining something that I'm doing to other teachers, I want to one, show how excited I am about it. Like, yo, I have this great idea, yo, check this. This is what we're gonna do in class today. Or, yo, the other day I had an issue with the student, this is what happened in class, and I knew for that kid I had to do something a little bit different, this is what I did, and this is how I won. So you're showing the proof, you're saying like, this is the idea, or this is the, the thing that I was dealing with, whether it was a problem with a student or, or a lesson in class, and here's the solution and here's how it worked, right? That is going to win, right, first of all. Second is trying to have proof, like, yo, I know we said we were gonna do it like this. I didn't feel like the students were getting it. I felt like they were still struggling with it, and so I did this instead, and whatever that was, maybe you, moved your class to another part of the building. Maybe you took it outside. Maybe you had props in class. The kids were wearing mustaches or feathers in their hair, or they read in the round, or you read the book as a play, or you had them you know, learn symbolism through graffiti or whatever the thing is that you did, you were telling the story of how that won, right? Because there's people cannot argue with winning. And here's the pushback that you get sometimes is, from other teachers, right? And I'm talking about when you're this black sheep teacher, when you're doing above and beyond or going doing extra and people don't like it. When folks complain about that and they say, well, I can't do that in my class. I'm not like you. I don't do things like that. I'm not as creative as you are. One of my favorite things I learned this year, the favorite things I, I heard in a presentation was Dave Burgess, who wrote a book called Teach Like a Pirate. And that's my publisher to just for some transparency here. Burgess said, that is one of the cheapest shots someone can take on a teacher that's creative because what they're doing is providing themselves with an out. They're saying, but I'm not that creative. And in reality, they are. We're all creative, but it's a muscle that you have to work. So what they're saying is they want you to lower your expectations, lower your awesomeness so that they can feel better about themselves. And I think that everyone in my building, and the introverts, the extroverts, the weird teachers, the strict teachers, the by the book teachers, all have some sort of awesomeness that they can bring to the table. They choose not to though, right? Because it's an easier thing to do to just follow the curriculum, follow the standards, follow the rule book, but that just doesn't work for everyone. That's stupid anyway, it's a dumb idea because not all students are the same. There are no silver bullets in education. There is no one way to teach a class, to deal with a student. It has to be fluid, it has to be different. I mean, we wanna talk about differentiated learning, but then we don't wanna differentiate anything really. It's like, we'll differentiate it for you in the curriculum because we somehow magically know how all the students work and how all children learn when they don't. They don't know how they learn. You have to teach like a DJ. And so sometimes what I mean by that is when class is going and you realize it's not working, just like a DJ, you don't, if you have a record on and you're, you're DJing a wedding and it clears the dance floor, you don't let the song play out, you mix it into another song and then hopefully get everyone on the dance floor. And when that's working and it's moving and the class is, is doing their thing and things are going great, that song, is doing well, but what am I gonna play next? And what am I gonna play next? And so it's not like I can give that set list 
to another teacher and say, this is the set list that works. Everyone will dance to it. And then every teacher and every school across the country is or, or across the world is going to be able to get down with that music. No, you're not going to send that to a teacher the next school district over or in the northern part of your state. Different kids get down with different stuff and you have to know your students to know what set list is going to really get them to get down with what you're doing in class. I think the other thing that you can do, right? Like this, this one more piece of advice is I think people don't like awesomeness or don't like the way you're dealing with things because they feel like they have not been invited to the party. I think we should be inviting teachers to our party. If someone says, yo, I'm doing something awesome in class today. Would you please be a part of it? Or I've had folks that if we're reading Merchant of Venice and I have some struggling readers in class, but there's a great part that I know if I can get four or five students reading and me and one other adult with some pretty strong parts acting it out, it's gonna go way better. So this happened in class the other day. We're doing the end of Merchant of Venice. I have my room set up like a courtroom. I have a kid with a gavel and kids have fake mustaches on and it, we're, we're going for it. But I needed a strong Porsche. So I asked another teacher, would they please come in? And they did. And we acted it out together. And the teacher and I were able to model the sort of behavior, the sort of exuberance, the sort of excitement that we wanted to get out of the students. And we won with that class. It was awesome. The kids all said they loved it at the end of the day. In that, you are bringing someone into the great stuff that you're doing and not just letting them sit on the outside. And then they get to see how great this can be. Also, if you are doing that with behavior, I will often look for teachers that have a good relationship with a particular student. I will reach out to them and say, hey, I'm having a hard time getting this guy to buy into my class or to behave, or we're just not jiving. Would you mind sitting down with us? Now that puts that teacher in a position of power and they're bringing the, what they've got to you. The idea here is not to be the greatest teacher in the building, the one that all the kids love. It's not that narrative of every teacher movie that you've ever seen. It's about working as part of a team to make your school the best, right? To make this community the best and not just you the best. So sometimes you're giving, but sometimes you're receiving information and ideas from other people as well. And I think that really, really helps the situation. Look, I will say in closing, there have been times when I've been reported by a parent, by a student, by another teacher that didn't like the way that I was doing things, right? And so I've been called in front of, you know, the principal or the vice principal or whoever was in charge, my department head. And it just really comes down to this. I really believe in what I'm doing. I know my why. I know that I'm winning and I have proof to back it up. And I just don't care what anyone else thinks. Now, that's not to say that if somebody comes at me with a really good point and says, hey, this is what's happening and this is the result or this is what the parent or the other teacher or the student thinks, that is worth a conversation. I'm always down for the conversation. You know, I do know that I want to stick to what I'm thinking, but also be able to have that conversation. So sometimes it's a both end. It's not just this binary decision that you make. Look, I really hope this helps. It's a much bigger topic than I can just do in one quick video. If you do have further questions, please leave them, leave them, leave them, leave them below and I will attempt to get back to everyone uh, as I can. If you really feel like this is something that you need more focus on. I also do mentoring. So you can go to my website, realwrapwithreynolds.com. You can sign up for mentoring there and I can do an hour long phone call with you and you can go in there and see rates and availability and just sign up through that. That's something we could do also to try and help you navigate some of the spaces that you're in. If you're looking for other options, there's the Facebook group, Real Rap with Reynolds Teacher Talk and Sunday Night Teacher Talk as well. You can show up if you watch this video and you have follow-up questions every Sunday night, 5 p.m. Eastern time. We meet live on YouTube on my YouTube channel and I'll answer any question. Nothing is is off the rain. The nothing is, I don't know. I'll answer anything. That sounded smart. It's the end of the day. That's it, gang. Hey, look at my turntable that I made real quick. I got a new group of kids. So I drew this turntable on my wall uh, today during like my after school program. And I'm going to put like some uh, graffiti around it too, but that's just step one. And I'm pretty excited about this wall. We're gonna use it for a lot of different stuff this year. And I just wanted to tell someone about that because people will get on you that your room is too cool also, or that you're too cool in the hallway. And that's a whole nother thing that I can make a video about if you're interested. But I think that's it for now, guys. Have a great night or day or morning or whenever the hell you're watching this. Peace. Peace.